the Utah Jazz. They were the oh, six yeah, seed. Hear Jack speak. They were yeah. the six seed last season. They finished forty four and twenty eight. They lost to Denver in seven games in the first round. I thought the Jazz had that series on lock. Donovan Mitchell was phenomenal in the playoffs. I think he had two fifty point games, or was it one? It was one of those. He had two fifty point games. I mean, the only guy they added was Derek Favors. They lost Ed Davis, Tony Bradley, Moutier, which I think that's those aren't even really losses, you know, because they drafted a Duku Azubuki from Kansas who can kind of fill that Ed Davis slash Tony Bradley role. And the starting lineup is going to be the same as last year as it's going to be this year. Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, and Rudy Gobert. You could slot in Ingles there if you want, but Royce O'Neal, Royce O'Neal gives them more defense. And I think their bench, you've still got Ingles, Clarkson, Favors is now there, Shaquille Harrison, George Niang, um, Nigel William Gross. So, I mean, they got some players, but for me, this team is, they have a high floor, but a low ceiling. I don't see them doing anything special. Maybe getting to the second round if things go right and stealing a game, but I, the most I see them doing is getting to the second round. I, I do have them making the playoffs just because it's Donovan Mitchell, but I think this year is going to be the start of Donovan Mitchell kind of realizing that this team is stuck and there's really nowhere else to go. I have them finishing as an eighth seed, as high as six, but as low as as low as low 10. Like, I could see them not making the playoffs this year because the West is so competitive. Like, you look at a team that's built similarly to them. Um, a team that's built similarly to them is a team like Memphis, right? A young up-and-coming star like John Morant, Jaron Jackson, Valen Shunis. Like, they can give them a run for their money in terms of acquiring a playoff spot. So, I don't know. I think they have a high floor or low ceiling. I'm not too excited about the Jazz this season. I, w- I would I would kind of direct them more towards Indiana. I think they're more of an Indiana with a star type team. I think they have a bunch of good players. You know what they're going to do. You know their identity. But they just have one star. And I'm not – I disagree at a point because I, I feel as though last year – when they blew the 3-1 lead, I, I feel like when they blew it, missing Bogdanovic was more noticeable when they blew the 3-1 lead because they had just one – Mike Conley wasn't that good, and they had just one guy doing the bulk of the scoring. And I think this year him coming back is going to be good because he was a 20-point scorer or 40% shooter from three last year. So that was their second guy. And I think defensively, Gonna, it's going to put them in games always because they're one of the best defending teams in the league. Donovan Mitchell is going to continue to get better. I think he's a top five shooting guard in the in the NBA. He's going to continue to get better. He's starting to come into his own as that leader, that clutch scorer, that go-to guy. And I think he's going to get them some wins. And I think I, I got him between the five and seven range just because of this. I'm not as high on the new teams that we're going to talk about later as you guys are, but I, I have them in the five or seven. I think defensively, they're going to win games just straight off their defense and offensively, they're going to have enough in the regular season to be able to win a lot of games because that's just all you need in the regular season. I think they kept the group that won them enough games last year. And with Bob Donovich, who was out, who got out during the regular season last year. So he missed a few games. He's coming back. That's going to be big for Donovan Mitchell because that's that second scorer. And they get Jordan Clarkson back for a full season instead of having him, getting him, I think, a little bit before the trade deadline. So now you have him for a full season to come off the bench and become that scorer. I like the Jazz. The Jazz are a very good team. But But. I am not nearly as high on the Jazz as a lot of people are. I see, you know, people calling the Jazz a playoff lock, uh, a team that can compete with the Lakers for the West. I don't see them anywhere near that range. And that's no offense to the Jazz, but I just think that's crazy talk. And here's why. One, they didn't address their shaky perimeter defense that bugged them all season last year. They're still going to be dealing with those same perimeter defensive issues. They're leaky on the perimeter defensively. There's no way around it. And they didn't address that bench depth that hurt them last year. And I get it. Granted, Bogdanovich goes down and that hurt them. They still are not a deep team this year. And we've talked about all of those top teams in the Western Conference go four or five guys deep on the bench and you could feel confident in them. And the Jazz don't have that. But the biggest problem that I see addressing the Jazz this season is something that nobody is talking about. Rudy Gobert is due for a max extension on December 21st, and we are sitting here on December 18th, 
and there has been no nego- there has been no advancement in the negotiations. I think it's very clear that Rudy Gobert sees himself as a supermax player, and rightfully so. The Jazz do not see him as that. And if they can't figure that out, then are you just going to sit and let Ro- Rudy Gobert walk in free agency this offseason? Because I don't think it's that crazy to say that at the trade deadline, we could see Rudy Gobert being shipped off, especially after what happened last season and the friction between him and Donovan Mitchell. Who knows if that's still looming? You know, I get it. They played really well in the bubble, but that is a big issue with your your second best guy on the team, a guy who is, in my opinion, overvaluing himself. You know, I, I just think that that's a big question mark to a team that already had other issues, and and I'm not as high on them as other people are this season. With all, with, so do you see him in Boston with all the questions looming in that 28.7, I think, trade exception do you see them because i i, I, I feel like that's it. where you were going with that i mentioned it in, in a couple of videos ago i don't remember the exact segment it was but i mentioned it earlier on and it would be a perfect fit he would be that guy to anchor the defense in boston and be that piece that me and you were talking about that could put the celtics over the top and make them a legit championship contender this year and the Celtics could offer a really good package to the Jazz because they have a lot of trade pieces and they have that trade exception, so they don't have to worry about matching contracts. So it's just an interesting situation. And, you know, more than likely, they will find a way to figure it out because he's one of their guys. He's been there his entire career. But it is a big question mark and something they need to figure out, and it's not something you want dragging into the season because that affects the way they're going to play on the court. And like I mentioned, there was already issues there and you just don't want those problems in your locker room, especially for a jazz team that although they are talented, they need their chemistry to be on point. They can't afford chemistry issues like a a very talented team like the Lakers or Clippers can and still cruise through the, the regular season. That's just my take on it, especially in the West. If they were in the East, I'd be singing a different tune. I think they'd be a playoff lock, but I'm not as confident saying that in the Western Conference. I mean, in my opinion, I think Rudy Gobert isn't a max player. I think Jazz fans will agree on that as well. I don't think anybody is valuing him as that. He's an elite defender. I agree with you there. He's an elite defender, no doubt about it. But the problem with Rudy Gobert is that in the playoffs, his production dips immensely because they, they tend to scheme for Gobert, get him out of the paint, and offensively he doesn't offer that much value. In my opinion, you can find a center like Gobert, not as great defensively, but you can find him on on a budget, basically. You can find him on a budget. If Boston were to trade for Gobert, I don't see them including a lot of assets because I think think Boston's mindset is that we have no intention of keeping this guy long term, especially if if it's for that amount of money. So the only way we're going to do it is that we're going to have him as a one-year rental to just guard the better players at center and just put them in and out of the lineup when we please. And I think that can work. Maybe if you throw in an Aaron Neesmith or a pick, it just depends on what Gobert's value is out there. Cause I think the jazz would rather get something than nothing for Gobert, but that's, that's only talking if, you know, they don't come to a deal, regardless if it's a super max extension, maybe if they don't, they can always offer another contract and he can sign it. So we never know. But I have their projection as being an eighth seed this year. I think they're as high as six and as low as eleven. Mm, I I agree. I think the um the, the Rudy Gobert trade to Boston. I know for a fact they wouldn't keep him long term. It would just be a, a one year rental because you he's not a super max pay layer. Let's just call it how it see it. He's, uh, he's I agree. not like, it's not he's not that guy you paid it like Giannis just got a super max. Why on earth would you think you would get a super max? So he's just not that type of guy. I feel like he's a He's not I, – I wouldn't really call him a max player in a sense. I wouldn't pay that type of guy that all that money. So, I think getting him to Boston, Boston would think, all right, this is our year, championship of bust. If we don't win it, he's going to go home anyways, and we still keep the young guys together. So, that doesn't really matter. So, yeah, I would I, – I, like I said, I have him in that 5-7 range. I think defensively they're just so good. It's going to get him some wins throughout the season. I think offensively Donovan Mitchell is the type of guy that we have – he has shown us that he can carry – an offense throughout a regular season. Come playoff time, I don't think they'll beat anybody in the top three this year. But I don't know because Bogdan did not play in the bubble last year. So they can surprise us. You never know. But like I said, I have him in the 5-7 range. 
I, I have them finishing seven. I could see them getting in the regular season as high as up to four if they figure out their issues, especially contractually. But I could also see them going as low as like 11 or 12. I don't think that they're a playoff lock by any means, especially in a tough Western Conference. But And that's no knock on the Jazz. I, I don't want it to sound like I don't think – it's a good team, but you need to be more than a good team to be a playoff lock in the Western Conference. And that will be a common theme as we go out these next – you know. 12, 10 teams I feel like all these teams are solid rosters but you need to be better than solid in the Western Conference and I don't feel great betting on that 